Good day everyone. So obviously for any company that puts out some sort of product, we have something called expectation management. So when you put out a product or a live service, there's quite a lot you need to manage in terms of how your customers or consumers interact with your product, the feedback that you give, as well as any sort of reasonable expectations that you are putting forward, whether it is implicitly or explicitly kind of stated. And this is the thing that we need to discuss when it comes to Genshin Impact, is just how did Hoyo manage our expectations and how they kind of failed at it. This is the point of this entire video. Now to get started, what were the expectations of anyone that sort of picked up Genshin Impact and started playing? Well, something very, very obvious that would hit you right from the start is that there is a system where you have characters and characters have abilities and you're taken through numerous tutorial stages to explain these abilities and sort of elemental reactions and coupled with a bit of exploration, you know, Amber, the whole glider thing and monster and all that good stuff, you kind of have a very base, a very good baseline expectation for what you're going to get, you're going to explore and you have combat mechanics to deal with enemies. And soon after that, you discover the gacha system in Genshin Impact. You discover that in order to make your party and character stronger, well, you need more characters, you need more weapons. You find out that the entire world of Genshin Impact is full of mechanics that allow you to upgrade your character, to get materials to upgrade your character. In fact, if you took away all of the weapon systems, everything all of the materials you need for characters and all the good stuff, you'd find that Genshin Impact has a very bland world and very few people actually acknowledge this. Nonetheless, let's continue our train of thought. The other thing that you find when you sort of started playing Genshin is that with each version, you had like big version events and what did a lot of these version events feature? Well, that was combat. The very b first big event with Mona and like where we first saw Scaramouche and all of that was a combat event. And this kept sort of going in Genshin Impact. So I'm not going to repeat all of them, but certainly from um, Monsad, Liwei, Inazuma, this really, there really has been no shortage of good combat mechanics that we've had. And honestly, it always felt like Hoyo had all of these great ideas. They've shown that when it comes to giving us combat related events, they are really, really good. And the only thing a lot of us have been waiting for and that we've actively asked Hoyo all of these months is to say, well, we kind of get that you guys are good at making these events. Now just make one of them permanent. Just give us a little something more than this Pyrrhal Abyss. And yet they haven't done it, but they continue to sort of put out combat events. So perhaps maybe that was the way going forward you know well this pyro this is going to be one thing and combat events are going to be something else but clearly they've sort of 180'd on this but before we get to how hoyo 180'd on sort of all of their expectations that they've been setting for the last two years let's look at a couple of other things to sort of cement this idea in genshin impact one of the characters that had a buff was zhongli and you might well say well why did he get a buff? Well, it's not because he was lacking in terms of personality or law. It's because he sucked. He objectively sucked as a character. And there was, for, with, with good reason, an outcry as to this character needing a buff. And obviously, as you go through the Genshin Impact patches, there were good reasons why a lot of people said Hu Tao and Gun Yu are like so, so strong. As once against evidence by, by the sort of banner sales and reruns, Hu Tao got a lot of sort of rerun um, sort of sales and so on precisely because she's good in combat not because of her personality there was nothing since Hu Tao's release in the game that sort of really indicated anything more or added anything more to her lore or her story or personality or any of the softer or casual things it was all about combat the other thing I think a lot of people also sort of kind of forget is that for a long while Inazuma characters were hailed as being weaker than their leeway counterparts and a lot of people kind of made notes of this fact and yet obviously they kind of woke up to the fact that Raiden is strong and obviously Kazuha and once again the banner sales confirmed this so it's very clear that for a lot of the players and for a lot of where the money comes from or the money that Genshin Impact generates a lot of it stems from the core fundamentals of an open world exploration combat based action RPG game the core fundamentals of what makes this entire game tick 
is around the core essentials of combat. Uh, so hopefully it's very very clear to everyone watching right now that the expectations, especially for people that have been long term players, is that we would get content that would sort of fulfill this need that would fulfill sort of our desire to play with combat this is why we sell constellations the biggest and most expensive thing in this game and this is precisely where the expectation management has gone so skew since Sumeru's release because the events and combat events we've been getting have been really sort of lackluster compared to what we've had previously there's been an intense amount of focus on casual content and ultimately my biggest worry with something like the tcg is not the fact that it is something that they're adding to the game but that it is something that they're adding that has nothing to do with the core fundamentals and obviously there are good solutions to including combat related events tcg with a lane system and a token system that i've discussed so many times on this channel uh, there's no shortage of good ideas in terms of getting both the casual and making the casual player happy as well as making the hardcore player happy. There are enough solutions out there, trust me. What we need now from Hoyo is to properly manage expectations and to be honest with characters because if you look at the history as I've sort of sketched it out here, it's very clear this is a combat game. Yes, the type of combat may not be as intense, may not be as hardcore as some other games, but certainly when played at its skill ceiling, Genshin has the depths that to make people want to like keep playing over and over, and this is just what they're not giving us. So the expectation management is pretty, pretty bad, and I think this is where, especially if you're a long-term player, the, the lack of content sort of signifies that your whole journey all of that effort you've been putting in the last two years all the leaks you've been watching so that you can get a good character so that you don't fall behind in terms of combat all of these things kind of mean nothing when there is a card game that is essentially devoid of the fundamentals of the game and it's being given to us as sort of quote-unquote content and here's the other big thing when it comes to people that actually spend on the game those players that purchase constellations and so on for whatever reason would honestly find that there is nothing for them to actually use their constellations or character upgrades for in the game because the game is continuously regressing in terms of its balance enemies are constantly nerfed uh, combat events are set at such absurdly low modifiers it's just uh, it's just pointless to even play stuff like the hyperstasis symphony it's just such a joke of an event and at the end of the day what this means is that those those people that truly want to support and love the game have nothing to really show for it and this is where hoyo needs to be so so careful because if i look at their financials and stuff it's very clear that server costs kind of eat into a lot of their profits the cost of keeping free-to-play players happy and creating content for them and hosting them is where is, is is honestly it's quite staggering if you sort of look at how their current infrastructure looks and for me if they don't manage the players that are actually well supporting this entire empire then even with a being a billion dollar company your costs can creep and they can creep in heavily especially if you're running multiple projects that have not yet paid off so from my perspective the fact that hoyo pissed off um, especially a lot of their well players is very very telling and hopefully they will reverse it but other than that if until such a time it's on Hoyo to actually do better and let me just sort of end off by saying it's not that I'm unhappy with Genshin I'm happy with Genshin but I'm not satisfied and I think there is a big distinction there that a lot of people kind of miss you want the game to do good you want the game to be one of the best games that it can be you have positive expectations for the amount that you and others have put into the game and lots of passion and obviously like soul into creating content for Genshin Impact and that is just what obviously I would not do it if I wasn't happy uh, for to play this game but obviously if the state of the game is unsatisfactory then we have to make a point because if we don't then we're still going to get this directionless 
uh, feature creep that they're just sort of trying to put in and it's just going to be a mess. The game's going to lose its identity and ultimately going to decline.